If you have the right vision, then your passion follows. And passion is what gives you energy. If you lack energy, then you probably have lost passion. And if you've lost passion, you've probably lost vision. Because vision clarified always produces passion. Yeah. Passion gives us the energy to do what we're called to do. What's up guys, this is Chris Estrada and I got a special guest today. We're live right here in uh, Palm Springs, California at an increased event and I just want to welcome to the show, Caleb. How you doing buddy? Man, so good. Glad to be here with you. Oh man. Thanks for having me here on your wonderful podcast, training leaders, business leaders, Christian leaders, just uh, helping people in so many different areas of their life. Glad to be here. So what's, what's, we'll start out, what's your uh, Instagram? It's Caleb Worley. Yeah, it's just my name, C-A-L-E-B-W-E-H-R-L-I, at Caleb Worley. Yeah, so Caleb, you know, I met you a couple years ago and I heard you speak and mm -hmm. it was, you know, when I heard you speak, it just, it, it did something inside me and you probably maybe remember it because I was trying to get some information out of you for a little bit and stuff like that. And you said something, um, you used the term, maybe, maybe I'll say it wrong, and I, it was uh, Meshach. Yes, Meshach. that's right. uh -huh. and, and I still try to t tell that story today and try to use it. I, sometimes I get wrong and stuff, but, uh, but you had said it was... Um, yes, the Hebrew word. It's the rubbing off of the anointing. The anointing yes. Yeah. And, and, and so, when you get around right. the right people, yeah. what's yeah. on them gets on you. What's on you gets on them. So it's this... It's similar to like the scripture says, iron sharpens iron. Yes. And so in Hebrew, they have that word called the meshach, the rubbing off of the anointing. Yeah, yeah. And so like that really changed my, that was, that will be forever one phrase or quote or, or speaking with, that you did that will have impacted and changed my life because mm. I realized that we have the power to not only receive an anointing, but to give the anointing. Yeah. Right. And and it's biblical. Mm -hmm. You know, this goes back to the beginning of time. And the fact that you've said that and taught so much. I don't know if anybody even got that, like what I got out of it. <laughs> I have no idea if anyone ever texted you about it ever again. But well, I was like, oh, I my remember God. you caught it. You were in that service. We talked afterwards. And, you know, so a lot of people can hear things, but not everybody catches. And so sometimes God illuminates something that specifically for us. Maybe there's a deficit that we're in our life, or maybe there's a next level we're looking for. And God can give you a phrase, a word, an encouragement. And I remember you grabbed hold of that. And it's when God speaks and we have an opportunity to grab hold of what he's saying, that's when real change takes place. So yeah, you were the only one in the room that day that uh, came up and said, man, what was that? I, I need to hear that again. And you know that stuck in your mind, and now it's being reproduced in what you're doing. So uh, I think it's awesome to see how God works that way. I like how you said, um, you know, people hear but they don't catch. Yeah. And it just, it just reminds me of how so many people they come to like conferences like this and they don't catch it. You know, you know, God willing, they'll catch something and do something better for their lives or something. But m most won't, honestly, most won't. And so the fact that, but the fact that you're out doing it, you travel all over the world, mm -hmm. uh, speaking to different ministries, uh, different uh, outreach events, different organizations. I mean, you're global, dude. Yeah, over the last, you know, I'm grateful over the last 20 something years, 27 years, I've had the opportunity to be in over 70 different countries. And I've been in industrialized cities, in remote villages, all for the same purpose, the same cause. And that is to help people to know Jesus and to follow him. And I prayed a little prayer when I was 17 years old on a mission trip as a lost young person just looking for adventure. And then I found God's mission for my life. I experienced the joy of telling others about Jesus and helping them to have a relationship with him. And so that uh, mission has helped me to be able to go around the world and serve people in different capacities train leaders, work with business people, work with ministries, and really for a kingdom purpose, to see God's will be done here on earth as mm -hmm. it is in heaven, like Jesus prayed in the Lord's Prayer. And in that, he uses people. So we're his hands, we're his feet, 
or his mouthpiece. Uh, he's now uh, in heaven. The scripture says Jesus is at the right hand of the Father, praying and interceding for us. What's he praying? He's praying that we would be connected to him and that we would then walk out his plan here on this earth, which involves us connecting with other people. So one of the biggest things in leadership, in business, in ministry, it has to do with our connection with God. Mm. You know, I can take your leadership advice, but if I'm not connected to God and you're connected with God, then you have the secret sauce and I'm just trying to replicate uh, the process. I won't get the same results. So part of your secret uh, to your success and even to what God is, is doing in your life is your personal connection to Him and the encounter you had with Him, the transformation, and then that's helped you become the business leader, become the father, become uh, the minister that you are today in every man's world, in everybody's life through your life, but it's in that connection with him. And so I think it's, it's really important when you think about life, when you think about leadership, and you think about taking whatever it is that's been entrusted to you to the next level, the most important thing is first internally having that foundation, a foundation of faith, and trust in God. Yeah. And then with that, you get around the right people. And the mixture of those two, I personally am connected to him, surrender to him. Mm -hmm. But then I get around the right people and I learn the right practices. I get the wisdom that I don't have. I mean, you can learn through multiple ways. I can make mistakes or I can get some mentors that help me in the process. So it's much better to learn what you've learned than to make those same mistakes that you've made. Mm -hmm. And then it speeds up the process. So I think in leadership, I'm grateful for the opportunity to share with people and to even be here in this uh, interaction to think about those that might be listening to us right now yeah. and wondering, well, what does that mean for my life? And I would tell them what it means is, number one, make sure you're connected to the right source. Oh yeah. If you're not connected to God, then uh, we're gonna be on an uh, uneven playing field because the advantage in life is not um, in what you know, it's who you know. Mm. And the who you know is more important about internally who you really know, which is God. Yeah. Then in the natural, yeah, who do you know in the natural that can help facilitate growth in your life? But that foundation is key. Then the external relationships are the additional things that help us get to further places in life. Yeah, I, I think, um, you know, like you said, who you know is like God. And, and I think knowing God and having that, that spiritual influence in your life, that relationship, it that's what allows you to, to walk through those doors Yep. That's that that relationship. God opens those doors. God, knowing God and knowing what He's capable of doing, knowing what He's done in our lives, gives us the confidence. I'll say like, hey, uh, you know, it's it's, um, you know, getting God will open the door, but the confidence you have and the faith you have and His abilities yep. that has trusted you with your own abilities will help you walk through the door. That's right. You know, and so a lot of people don't know God, and for for me. Like knowing God, the relationship has changed my life, you know, and it's led me to things like this yeah. events. I mean, that's right. I think uh, the first time I came to this particular event was 2010 and it changed my life. Mm. I mean, you know, we're starting business 2009. We're just married in 2008 or second marriage and, you know, opening up and saying, OK, and then praying and then getting around other people that love God. And yeah. like you said, is is because. Uh, I can only do so much if I don't have a relationship with God. And then if I'm watching you succeed, and like, what are you, how are you doing it? You know, you know, everybody's <laughs> like, oh, I wish I had that. I wish I had that. Well, you know, it starts one, one step at a time. The first That's thing right. is give your life to God. Mm -hmm. You know, um, you know. So as you have, as you traveled the world, you've been all over seventy countries. I think you said mm -hmm. seventy, seventy six, probably. Um, you know, you've seen everything. Mm -hmm. What what is it that attracts you to travel to? all these places, you know, and, and just keep spreading that word, even when you're tired and you're hurt and you know, you know, you're busted up, what, what keeps that drive going? Well, I think it comes down to what your, the individual vision of your life is and what does that look like? For me, I remember that village when I prayed that prayer and I surrendered to Jesus and I was on that missions trip, you know, as a 17 year old, and I made a commitment that I wanted to help people the rest of my life in this way. And I said, God, wherever you want to send me. And so that was the vision. The vision was send me wherever to whoever and help me reach as many as I can. What I've come to, I guess, agree with is what the Bible says. And the Bible says that 
we need to go everywhere and tell everyone. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's not really a big decision. Should I go to Hong Kong? Should I go to Bangkok? Should I go to Dubai? Should I go to I'm jealous, bro? You know, wherever. Should I go to these places? Well, Jesus said go. Yeah. So now he's just looking for people that will come into alignment with what he says. And that has to do with your vision. And I think this is important even as a leader, because for me, people say, well, how do you do this? And you fly on a 16 hour flight and then you preach this message. And you know, sometimes I'll fly halfway around the world for two days. I'll be there for half a day. I'll get on a plane, I'll fly halfway around the world and I'll come back. People say, how do you do that physically? Well, if you have the right vision, then your passion follows. And passion is what gives you energy. If you lack energy, then you probably have lost passion. And if you've lost passion, you've probably lost vision. Because vision clarified always produces passion. Yeah. Passion gives us the energy to do what we're called to do. The Bible says this way, the joy of the Lord is our strength. Joy comes from what we're passionate about. So when you're passionate about something, then you have strength. But what most people don't realize is, how do we stay passionate? And that has to do with our vision. So when I think about lost people, hurting people, people that are dying, that don't know Jesus, that's the vision. How can we do whatever we can to reach them? I go into villages in Cambodia and rural places, no electricity, no running water, I meet with people who've never heard about Jesus, present the gospel in a few minutes, and their eyes get big. They say, how have I lived my whole life and never heard this story? It's crazy. And then they say, if this is true, this is what I want. And in a moment, we pray, and then everything changes. I remember one time I was talking to a lady, 95 years old, grew up Buddhist her entire life in a small uh, village in Cambodia. She prayed that prayer to accept Jesus into her life. As she prayed, her back was suddenly healed. We didn't even pray for her back. We didn't do any special miracle prayers or anything. We just prayed for salvation. But Jesus also is the healer. So when you surrender your life to him, everything that he is comes into your life. So to me, it comes down to vision in the sense of there are still so many places that we need to go. Why wouldn't I go? And if God opens up the opportunities and provides the resources, then I'll do whatever he's called me to do. And thankfully, that's you know, allowed me to serve a lot of people in different places. But the other thing that it's helped me to realize is that God is moving in strategic ways all over the earth. Mm. So many times we think that just what we hear about is all that's going on. Yeah. And in reality, what we hear about is a fraction of reality, mm -hmm. especially as Americans. Yeah. We think we're the center of the earth, a couple hundred million people. We think we are the center of everything. We aren't even the majority. No. You know, we're outnumbered in many different countries in the amount of population. So we aren't the center of everything. God is the center of everything. We're just his hand, you know, his hand, <laughs> handiwork here doing whatever he's asked us to do. And so, I think it helps me to realize God's really doing some fantastic things all across the earth. And I, I just like being a part of whatever that is in a small way, in a big way, whatever it is, to just help people to find Jesus. And what's crazy is, is as you're doing this, God funds the whole thing. Yeah. You know, it, you know and because and, and, it takes money, you know, and that's why I talk to people a lot too. And, and when it comes to church conversation and they get real leery when it comes to money, and I always tell people because I'm involved in it is, it takes money. Yeah, it does. You know, besides running a church building and paying for staff, but to be able to travel to Cambodia or Hong Kong, I mean, these are, you know, $2,000 flights. At least. You know, and then you got to get out there and stay <laughs> out there. And then you got to, you want to take stuff to people and give stuff yep. to them. And, and, you know, people don't understand is, is it takes finances, you know. That's why we need more kingdom minded businesses. Yeah. You know, yeah. a lot of the people, I actually probably hang out more with business people who are kingdom minded than I do pastoral ministry leaders. Mm -hmm. Because when I hang out with kingdom minded business people, things on the inside of me just expand. I feel like, yes, we can, we can do this because it's a partnership. It's a coming together. One of my best friends, you know, he, he owns a fantastic business. It's doing in the multi-million dollars. And uh, every time we're together, he's getting an idea. I'm getting an idea. And that's the way kingdom partnerships should work. Mm -hmm. It should work. This is God's vision. Now, who is aware of this and who's going to take faith to go after that? 
and it may be one person in the going, one person in the giving, maybe in giving and going together, but the end result is God's heartbeat to reach people, but it definitely takes kingdom-minded businesses doing well, expanding and growing in order for the gospel to go around the world. I like to say it like this, uh, Jesus paid it all, but it does cost us to follow him. It does. Right? It yeah. costs us to follow him. It costs yeah. us to send people to follow him. It costs us to tell people about him because, you know, he gave it all and it was free. But now it costs us to do something great for him. Yeah. It costs us to have a wonderful conference. Here we are, 400 or so Christian business leaders and ministry leaders from around the U.S. that have gathered together for this conference that we're a part of uh, together. Why are they here? Why are they believing for increase so we can reach more people. If it's just for us to have more things or to say we have a bigger business, there's no amount of zeros that will be enough. No. And none of that we can take with us to heaven. Mm -hmm. So it's all about kingdom-minded businesses, which means my business actually isn't even mine. It's God's. Yeah. The most successful businesses I know about are when the owners recognize they're the steward, not the owner. Mm -hmm. God's the owner. And he allows me the, the ability as the president or whatever to steward this opportunity. And the more I steward that in a successful way, God can scale it the yeah. way he wants. I totally agree. You know, we had, um, so a, a side note story is um, about a year ago, I, well, we created our living trust, our mm -hmm. family trust. And, you know, we hired a lawyer and stuff like that. And I did a lot of research on the trust and different wealthy families and how they messed up their trust and how they went broke, you know. Uh, gen uh, families that had like uh, seven generations of family members, they still had the wealth, you know, and then some that had four, like when you start looking at the Rothschilds and the Rockefellers, all these guys. And, and so, but the conclusion I came to was, <coughs> I created this set of rules for our trust and part of it was you had to still keep tithing. Mm -mm. If you wanted to be part of the trust, the kids, my kids, yep. you had to uh, be actively involved in the church. Your spouse had to be actively, actively involved in the church. You had, and you, like none of that could go away. Yeah. If, and you know, whether I have 20 million or 20 billion, when that time comes, my kids, my children know. These are the rules. These are the rules. And you <laughs> have to, God has to be the core of all of it. Yeah, that's good. You know, and I think, uh, you know, more people need to be that way because like you said, is, is, um, it's a marketplace thing. That's what we learned about the marketplace. And, um, people ask me, well, you ever going to become a pastor? Um, because I'm so close and tied into it. And I'm like, no, I don't want, I'm technically a pastor, but mm -hmm. I don't want to preach because I want to make money and give it. You know what I mean? Yep. You know, and I know if I give it, God will keep giving it to me. Yeah. It's just a, re and it's just a revolving, you know, because God trusts me. Like I said, I'm a steward. He's trusts me. Isn't it amazing? You know, growing up, you hear that phrase, if you're in the right environments where people say you can't outgive God. Mm -hmm. Isn't it amazing how? even when you get to a place and you think, I don't know, that's pretty big. And even when you give that big seed that in your mind feels big, God figures out ways to get things back to you. Isn't Always. that, I mean, I'm sure you've seen that oh my, uh, in so many ways, like, okay, and you get together with your wife or your business, we're gonna sow and it's a big seed. And what you think is big, God says, okay, that was big to you. Now watch what I'll do. Yeah, it, it's, it's so true. We've, we've challenged ourselves every year you know, the way we give, it's a principle I learned from Mike Rovner, um, is, you know, we, we give based on our relationship with God, and we challenge them because God says, give our tenth. But we, we, God doesn't say what the tenth needs to be. Hmm. So uh, my wife and myself will say, okay, well, our tenth is this. Yep. It's really this. Mm -hmm. But it's this, God, because you're going to give us the 90, you said. Yep. He said it. It's his word, right? And so we challenge God all the time, and we give more. And even in our hardest times, I tell people, our worst times are better than people's best times. Not to brag or not to down someone, but it's the truth. And when we're going through something, we just went through something recently, and uh, I mean, it, it, it was almost a catastrophe in our company. Mm. This is the truth, this is the first time I'm talking about it. And just like a week ago, I got the biggest check we've ever received. <laughs> and, and it just, like, I don't know, I didn't even know it was coming, to tell you yeah. the truth. And just massive check. And yeah. I'm like, okay, God, you got my attention. Like, you know, I was broken up a month ago, I was like, when he was like, cut the ropes and not, don't quit, that was me a month ago. I'm like, I'm, I'm tired, I'm done, I was beat up. And then next thing you know, God's like slapping me and you know, you gotta keep going. You got too many people that rely yeah. on you. And then boom, here's the check. And I'm like, okay, okay, we're good, mm -hmm. we're good, we got this. 
And that's what you're saying. It's like you can never outgive God because it's all, there's always yeah. going to be something that will bring you through. He'll either he'll use someone, something, somewhere. Yeah. Like, the, you know, there's stories where he's using donkeys and he's using animals. He's using everybody, everything. Yeah. A rock. He'll use a burning bush. He'll use whatever. Whatever seems big to us is never big to God. He sees our obedience, but we think he's going to be impressed with the size. And God's never impressed with the size, but he does look at our obedience. Mm -hmm. So he sees that it feels big to us, but to him, it's not big. I mean, the Bible says he owns the cattle on a thousand hills and all the oil and the gas underneath, you know, if you, if you realize everything. it. Yeah. He owns everything. The scripture also says the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. So that means what we see and what we don't see is his. Mm -hmm. And if we can come into alignment with the fact that we are part of what he wants to do in the earth is to work through us in greater ways. Why wouldn't we give more of what we have to see his kingdom expand in the earth? And the reciprocal nature of that, according to Genesis, is that as long as this earth remains, there's going to be seed time and harvest. Actually, the only thing that I can do to predict what my future is going to look like is not in my knowledge, not in my ability, not in my resources, not in the people that I know. The only thing that I can do to determine what's the future going to look like for my life is the seed I sow in the present. No other amount of, of my abilities or my relationships, where I'm from, or what's hanging on my wall, what degree I have, those things will not predict what the future is going to look like for me. Mm -hmm. But the scripture promises there is seed time and there is harvest time. Mm -hmm. So if I want to know what my future looks like, then all I have to do is stop and look at the seeds that I'm sowing in the present. Yeah. Because what we sow in the present determines the future that we're going to walk into. In fact, as I was walking across the parking lot to come in here and do this podcast with you, I stopped and talked to one of our friends that, that we know. He was out here in his car. As I stopped to talk to him, he said this, quote, I gave 500, 000, half a million, he said, I gave half a million dollars away recently and it felt like a lot. And then he says, but just this Monday, I got three times that in billable invoices for my company. Mm -hmm. He said, and I'm always, he said, I've been doing this more than 30 years and I'm still amazed. When I think something's big, God says, watch me surprise you. Mm -hmm. And that's what I think is amazing about uh, the resources and about the businesses and really the stewardship of what God entrusts to us that when we realize he's the source and then we sow our seeds and we take steps of faith and obedience God uses us in amazing ways and that's what he's doing through your life through your business yeah I mean you're seeing it in one area but God wants to say continue to scale that in other areas yeah and I, I, I believe the same way you believe is even in our room, in the podcast room, I have all these words and quotes and stuff. And in big, big letters, it, it says, sow seeds. Mm. And I tell everyone, everyone who I come in contact with, I'll say, if I can leave you with anything, come on. sow seeds. Mm -hmm. Because we're, it's, it's, I go, it's like a farmer. We're just growing harvest. And I go, guess what? You, you can plant the seed. Someone can water the seed. Now everybody's reaping harvest. Yeah. And I go, but when you get the harvest, it's still the hardest thing to ever do because now you have you have this you're bearing fruit you have a larger seed and then exactly and you and you now you're a steward of more yeah so now you got to figure out what you got to do with it That's i go it. i tell people it takes more work than ever when you get a harvest because i go think about you get a harvest of trees now you got to pick the fruit mm -hmm. box the fruit you eat some fruit for keep some fruit for your family you give some fruit away you sell some fruit you replant the fruit mm -hmm. and it and it, you have to do those certain things because if you eat it all you end up with nothing yep. if you give it all you end up with nothing yep. it's all you have to do this like perfect mixture kind of type thing god says okay here's what you're going to do you keep some for you you give some to them you give some to me and you replenish again yep. you keep going right and so i tell everyone so seed so seed so i mean that's like that's kind of my whole thing. If, if I ever do any kind of teaches, when I do do mm -hmm. teach talk, it's about sowing seeds. That's awesome. I don't even talk about anything else, to tell you the truth. I just talk <laughs> about sowing seeds. I don't yeah, talk about... Seed time and harvest still works. It, yeah, because it's, it's, that's the end all be all, really. Yeah. Like, even if we believed in everything in the Bible, which we do, if you don't sow seeds, you won't get a harvest. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. Mm -hmm. I mean, it goes back to the three talents. You know, it, it's that whole principle. And so I love that you said that and brought that back 
in because sowing seeds and I tell people just give just give mm -hmm. and the young entrepreneurs on the, the other podcast stuff I say give you got to give don't always try to charge everyone the most you're yeah. going to give jobs away you're going to help people you're they're going to struggle you're going to get beat up and you're going to give no matter what mm -hmm. and and then I go and you're going to watch everything's going to come to fruition and it's going to grow and so that's what I'm doing is I'm, I'm sowing seeds everywhere Caleb come on that's awesome I mean everywhere everyone who I come in contact with if, if they're blessing me with a good word, I'm blessing them with a check. Praise if God. they're giving, if they need clothes, I'm blessing them with clothes. If they need food, I'm blessing them with food. If they need advice and I can give the advice, yep. I'm giving them the advice. And it's like, I'm just planting seeds. That's all I'm doing. That's my whole life now. It's just give, 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 mm. give, 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 give. And I, and, I, and, I, and I may not get it all. My kids, my grandchildren will reap it. And as long as they see me giving and they continue to give, then that legacy will keep going. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I'm so glad you talked about that. Um, so as, as we wrap this up, you know, I, I, I just want to um, ask you a question. And, what, you know, what, what's the biggest piece of advice besides the sowing seeds you would give that young, um, young entrepreneur, young up and comer, whether it's in, uh, in, in church, leadership, business, what's that one nugget you would give them, leave them if, if you, if, you know? Yeah. Well, the way I look at success in life is it comes down to a few things. One is your number one, your obedience to God, following Him, surrendering to Him. Significance is all about obeying Him. Second, I think it has to do with the, the seeds you're sowing. You know, you're following God, but if you're not sowing good seeds, then you, you will continually walk into a negative harvest. And the third, I think, has to do with the mindset and the attitude that you allow to dictate uh, your behavior. Have you ever met a negative person? How did you know they were negative? Because of what they said, yeah, the way they walked, them. the way they talked. So to me, one of the most uh, uh, best leadership characteristics is keeping a positive mindset in the midst of negative circumstances. You know, when I, uh, over the years, I've hired multiple people for different positions. In the beginning, I always looked at all the criteria, then I would interview and all these things. And somewhere in there would maybe be the way that they handle negative experiences. But now, one of the most important things I look for is, what's the attitude of this person? Mm -hmm. Because the attitude of a leader dictates the environment of a place. Yeah. So I think that when a person has a positive attitude in the midst of negative circumstances, then they can succeed when other people would fail. And that's what I would say. Uh, because if you allow your life to be dictated by circumstance, then you're gonna be up one day and you're gonna be down the next day. And there are even some people in Christian circles that say, you know, well, it's not all uh, mountaintops, we're gonna go through the valleys. And they quote scriptures like, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, yeah. I'll fear no evil. But the scriptures also that I read say that we should go from glory to glory. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. that means there's actually mountaintops that I can go from one mountaintop to the next mountain. I don't have to go down into those valleys. And actually, even if I'm walking through those valleys, I don't have to have a valley mentality. Mm -hmm. I don't have to have a negative mentality. I don't have to have a mindset of defeat because I believe the glory to glory, strength to strength, like the scripture talks about, is a lot about what I'm going to receive by faith. So though I may be going from this mountaintop to this mountaintop and I might go down like this, I don't have to look like a person who's gone down. I can actually stay a person who goes up. And that has to do with our own personal mindset and belief system. And a lot of that is controlled by individually by our spirit. Scripture also says that the one who controls his spirit is greater than he who takes an entire city. Mm. So that means my attitude actually is my decision. It's not the circumstances. So in the same way a negative person can be seen, a positive person can be seen. Have you ever seen a positive person? Terrible things are going on. They're still happy. They're still up. They're still positive. How is that? It's not the circumstance. It's an internal decision. And I believe that the most successful Christian business, kingdom-minded people that I know, know how to keep up positive attitude in the midst of negative circumstances. So it has to do with your source, God, it has to do with your seed, what you do with what God has given you, and then it has to do with your mindset or your attitude, how, you're, how you are on the inside, 
Because when you have those decisions on the inside that I'm going to believe and stay full of faith, even when things have happened negatively around me, then those usually are the people who come out on the other side. And in closing, I'll tell you this story. I had a friend one time recently. He said, how come whatever season of life you're in, it seems like things always just get better. And he was almost saying it like negative, like how come if this job changes, your life is better. If this door closes, your life is better. And I said, well, you know, I guess I just expect that's the way it should be. Oh, I love that. And I think when you have that kind of outlook, it's not the job. It's not uh, the boss. It's not the government. We can blame a lot of people. But at the end of the day, if I'm serving God, then he's taking care of me. So I wouldn't have an expectation that things are going to be all right. That would be my advice. I love it. Well, there it is, guys. Have a positive expectation. Keep God first. Man, thank you, Caleb. Caleb Worley, follow him. Instagram, wherever he's at, look him up, Caleb Worley. Thank you, thank you so much. Be blessed.